Hello and welcome to part 8 of Firefox OS programming. In this part I'll introduce you to the web API of Firefox OS or the web APIs. And first let's take a look on the following website developer.mozilla.org slash docs slash web API. On this page you can find a suitable explanation what web API actually is. Okay, well, Web API is a term used to refer to a suite of device compatibility and access APIs that allow web apps and content to access device hardware, such as battery status or the device vibration hardware, as well as access to data stored on the device, such as the calendar or contact list. That's basically all you need to know what Web API is. And if you look further down on this page, um, all the available web APIs are listed. And if you click on an API, you get its description and uh, an example. Okay, but before we start, I have to explain you a few things. And if you can see, there are some APIs which don't have any batch attached to them like uh, certification required or non-standard and there are upper other APIs which got them attached like for example the web SMS API which is certification required and non-standard. So what do all these batches mean for you as a developer? Um, let me explain. Okay, let's start with the APIs without any batches attached. You can freely use them without asking anybody or without going through a certification process or review process. So if you want to use, for example, the Network Information API, you can use these lines of code without asking the user for any permission or Mozilla. That's the most simple API form you can use in your apps. And then there are the privileged apps. These are the uh, uh, privileged APIs. These are the APIs with the batch privileged attached. So what are privileged APIs? To make this clear, let's for example click on the TCP socket API and then on the top of the appearing page you see in red here this API is available on Firefox OS for privileged or certified applications only. So let's click on this link, Privilege or certifi Certified Applications, and scroll a little down. And here you have the, inf the explanation of what privileged apps are. Let me um, read this for you. Privileged apps. These apps are allowed to request increased permissions, and such as privileged apps must be ver verified and signed by a marketplace. Well. This actually means that, first, you have to add in your manifest, as I told you a few uh, chapters earlier, you have to add privileges for this API to your manifest file. And second, um, these kind of apps, if you want to uh, provide them on the Mozilla Marketplace, they are getting uh, reviewed by a team. and. If everything is okay, they appear in the market, and if it's a, a bad app, for example, if you, I don't know, make phone calls without a user's permission, then <laughs> the app is rejected. These are privileged apps. For example, if we go back to our list, the TCP socket API, or the device storage API, the contacts API, or the browser API. Okay, and last but not least, what are, uh, what are APIs with the batch certification required attached? Well, certification required means um, that you actually can't use them at the moment. If we click, for example, on the Bluetooth API and again click on certifi certifi certified applications only, we go to the description here and Certified apps. Certified apps can currently only be pre-installed on the device. 
this means nothing else than um, that only the issuer of the device or the manufacturer can install them on the device and issue them to users. So you as a developer, as a third-party developer, don't have access to certified APIs. Okay, but that's all for now for the description of the web APIs and as I told you we will start with the network API, the battery, AP battery status API and the geolocation API. Let's start. To prepare ourselves for these examples and the following ones I created a new example called example 3 and this example is based on our last example with a few modifications. Um, let's start with the index.html file. Almost everything remains the same here. We have our footer and we have our header. What is important to note is that our MyStyle CSS file must be present and our MyScripts JavaScript file must also be present. Um, you can copy the whole folder of example 2 into example 3 and modify the index.html file as I tell you now. Okay, let's look at our content section. What did I program here in the content section? Okay, first I defined a button. Input type is button and gave it the value call API. We will use this button in our further examples to call the different API functions to trigger them. And the onClick event calls a JavaScript function called getData. We will define this function in our own JavaScript file in myScripts.js. Below this button I defined a new div section with a data role of content and I gave it the ID dynamic data. You can also use any other name you like, but I suggest you use the same here, dynamic data. And I also add a CSS class to this div element and this class is called dynamic. The content of uh, this div element is at the moment just the string test. And we will add here within this div element the result of our API calls. For example, if we will get the user's location, we will display the location here within the div element. That's all for our file index.html. And next, let's look our myscripts.js file. You should ignore the commented out content at the moment. Just declare a function called getData with nothing in it. If we start our app in our simulator, I go to the dashboard and I click refresh. The simulator is popping up and you can see here we have our button call API, our test string where we will place our the result of our API calls and because our JavaScript method is still empty, uh, nothing should happen if I click this button. OK. Before I'll show you the three APIs I mentioned, battery status, network and um, what, what else was it? TCP socket API now. Um, battery status, network and First let me show you the screen orientation API because this API is I think one of the simplest APIs you can use and it is actually for me it is no API because it does not require or use JavaScript. How th can this be? Okay, let me explain you. This will be very interesting. Besides our JavaScript file we also included our own styles file called mystyles.css and before I show you the result of what we will do now let's look in our, in our file mystyles.css as from previous examples we have the styles for header, footer, heading and so on heading first letter 
And what is new now is, you remember, I defined a class dynamic here in our index.html file. I gave the class name dynamic to our content div element where we want to display our results. And at the moment, just test appears here. So, what did I define for this class? Here you can see a new element I added for this class. And it begins with an add sign, followed by media, add media, space, then the word screen, and, and in brackets, orientation landscape. And within curly braces I inserted the class definition. So what does this actually mean? It's very simple. It means that this class definition only takes effect if we are in orientation landscape mode of the device. As you can see, font size 32 points. This here is not 32 points. I don't know, perhaps 12 or 14 points, but not 32 points. Okay, all I was doing is adding this new style sheet to our MyStyles CSS file and assign dynamic as the class name here in our HTML file. So let's see what will happen if I turn the device around to landscape mode. You remember we have a button here to do this. Okay, I will click it and... Oh! Very nice. This here is 32 points actually. So what you can do with this API, with the screen orientation API, you can define different classes for the different screen orientation types. You could also add here color red or whatever you like and if you switch the device's orientation from portrait to landscape mode or vice versa the defined um, class is used. Very nice. For this functionality you don't need any line of JavaScript code, you just have to edit your CSS. But what is important for you is that as a developer is, um, I think Android and iOS also offer this capability to disallow the user to change the orientation. Of course the user can hold its, uh, its sm his smartphone in landscape mode, but you can force that um, the layout remains the same so that the user actually won't change to landscape mode. How can we do this? Okay, for this edition we need a little JavaScript. So let's go to our scripts, uh, my scripts JS file, and I have prepared it here in this line. Let's remove it, the documentation, and simply call screen dot mods lock orientation and as a value give the string portray. This means that the device won't change the layout to landscape mode. It will remain in portrait mode. Okay, I will save the file and let's check this out. I have to restart the whole simulator that this will work. Um, refresh The same app is popping up. We still have our button with no function. And what happens now if I click orientation change? Uh, okay. Why does it still work? Um, I'm not sure. Let us look what's wrong here. Lock orientation portrait. It should work. I don't know what I have done wrong. Let's perhaps try it here within the method. Um, it's still working. Re 
reloading. Ah, okay. I don't know what it was, but uh, perhaps some bug in the simulator. Um, I'll reload it again. And if I try now to change the orientation here, the, the simulated orientation in our simulator, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, let's come to our second web API I want to introduce in this part. Uh, close the simulator again and remove the screen lock orientation here. And let's add another functionality. The functionality to get the current status of the battery. And for this purpose we add a new line here at the top in our JavaScript called var for variable declaration battery and we assign battery the value of navigator battery. And if navigator battery is not supported the browser will try navigator mods battery or and navigator webkit battery. These are the different implementations of the different um, web browsers. So if you want to develop apps for example for Tyson or for for just another browser you should always if possible include or try to get all these objects um, the JavaScript the, this uh, this object battery will be assigned the first um, matching um, object for Firefox OS you could just use uh, Navigator battery or no mods battery of course Mozilla <laughs> mods battery um, then you would have the same functionality but as I said just try on always these three to get one of these three objects so that object Navigator battery is stored in our battery variable at each time we reload our app and now let's come to our function get data and you can see I have already prepared a line here document get element by ID dynamic data inner HTML and as a value we assign a string the battery level is at plus battery dot level with battery dot level you get the level of the current battery um, and we make this times 100 to get the current percent value of battery.level because battery.level um, you get a value between 0, .0, .0 and 1.0 .0, I think so we just do this times 100 to get the correct percentage value okay we have defined our get data function and the element dynamic data as you remember is our element here our content element we gave it the ID dynamic data so if we press the button in the app the t text test should be replaced with the text we define here in our script the battery level is at m percent okay let's save the file and try this all out I go back to the dashboard refresh our app and see what happens if we click now the call API button. Perfect. The battery level is at 45% and you can see it is true. Let's proceed to the next API, the network, network status API. First I remove this line here and the declaration of our battery object. All you have to do for this example is get an other object called network and like for battery you have the three options to check um, navigator connection or navigator mods connection or navigator webkit connection. The runtime will provide you with the correct object found and store it in our network variable. 
and in our function get data just at the following line the same as for battery document get element by id dynamic data inner html your current bandwidth is and then instead of the battery dot level just add network dot bandwidth and add mbps for megabits per second and save this file and now let's see what will happen in our simulator i reload it and before i press the button let me tell you you will be disappointed <laughs> i press it and your current bandwidth is undefined so why undefined I can only speculate. I think this is because we are running within the simulator and not a, an actual device. But I didn't test this on a device, but it should work, so feel free to try it out. This concludes the 8th part of uh, Firefox OS programming tutorial. I introduced you to the web APIs, um, what web APIs are and what you have to do to use them. And in this example, I just introduced the APIs without any further certification or, or the privileged APIs I showed you. Some APIs which you can use without any um, permission. And in the next part, we will talk about the geolocation API. For this API, you will need permission from the user. And... Um, you have to declare the mission, the permissions in your manifest file and we will change the JavaScript to actually get the location of the user. Um, okay, that's it. I hope I will see you in the next part, part 9, web APIs where I introduce you to the geolocation API and perhaps some other interesting APIs. Thank you.